Sunday night? I think it was Sunday night. Eight under today, what was clicking? The putter. Uh, made a lot of putts today. And, you know, my caddy, Brad, has known me forever, kind of gave me a little pep talk. I think it was Wednesday afternoon about the putter, and um, it worked. It was, he knows me too well, and um, it showed. It's, his expertise are equally as much as being my friend and knowing who I am as well as a caddy. What were they, like mechanical little changes or just? Um, just, you know, we, we kind of talked back about some times when I putted well and when I putted poorly and tried to, you know, break down what happened when I putted well and try to just repeat that out here. And it's tough, you know, because you miss a putt and you want to try to fix it, but um, you just got to stick with what works. First time making it to the weekend here. What are you looking to do starting tomorrow? Yeah, I am very excited for my first tee time on uh, Saturday here in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, I've always loved this tournament. Love this golf course. Steve Gents, probably one of the best tournament directors we have out here. He's amazing and um, excited that we have another year with Sanderson next year. So um, I'm just, first of all, pleased to make the weekend. Um, however, there's a, a bunch of guys really packed at the top. And so it's going to take a really low number tomorrow to separate yourself. Is it kind of motivating to see, like yesterday, David Skins at a 60s out there? Uh, motivating um, is might not be the right which is a little intimidating I would say because knowing that all these guys that are so good that are right at the top of the leaderboard any of them get throw out that number which means if you don't you're going to fall behind so it's you know it's out there you got to be confident and, and try to go as low as you can um, but it's going to be a battle toward the end because I just think there's too many guys at the top to really separate yourself come Sunday close on the number playing opportunities here in the fall you know you love pebble what's kind of motivation there for playing your way into these signature events for 2025? I, of all the signature events, those are probably my two favorites, um, Riviera and Pebble Beach. And um, being able to to tee it up at Pebble um, is, you know, I've played it every year. It's been a fun tournament, and I really want to be back there. Same with Riv. I played NCAAs at Riviera. Gosh, I think that was 2000, 2012 maybe, and that was my, my first really good event as a college player. So um, both of them have a special place in my heart. And uh, Keith, just still on that point, where do you as a professional draw a line mentally between using your headspace to win this golf tournament and then also thinking about uh, these signature events and playing your way into more solid footing with those? I think for me, playing to play my best and and trying to win the golf tournament, the rest will take care of itself. I mean, it's very cliche, but it's unfortunately the truth. It's like, if I can do what I do well and continue to do it well, the rest will take care of itself. Unfortunately, finding out what you do well sometimes is hard, and then repeating what you do well is hard. So it's easier said than done, but I've made some progress the last two days, so hopefully I can keep it going. Last time anyone here will mention that this is your first cut made here at Sanderson Farms, but uh, just in the, f what kind of allowed you to finally get over the hump here, do you think? Was there something, was you just feeling different on the course this year? You know, I've, I've changed a lot of my practice this year. Um, my, my strokes gained approach throughout my career has been very below average, and I'd made a bunch of excuses for why that was until this year, and um, it's been working really hard on my practice, my practice routines, um, hitting my numbers and quit worrying about my golf swing as much. And i um, thankful that I have a great swing teacher who I don't have to see that often um, because he's made my swing like it is. And so I started to focus on hitting my numbers, hitting shots. And then um, that, that, that changed everything for me in my approach game. Um, and then I made some putts. I mean, it's it, putting is that simple. I made some putts today. Hopefully I can make them this weekend. But the rest of the game took a lot of hard work this year to get my wedge game and my iron play to the level it needed to be because in the past it has been my driver and, and nothing else. Thank you. And final one, playing well means later tee time. Won't be able to catch all of the Georgia-Auburn game. Will there be in-course, on-course updates, or we'll have to find out after your round? <sighs> My luck watching Georgia this year has been um, very – when I've watched the game, we have done poorly. I've watched the first quarter and a half against Alabama, didn't watch it until the fourth quarter, it was like three minutes left, and then we lost again. So I think this is the best for the dogs that I will be on the golf course, 
and um, you know, fingers crossed that my uh, watching the TV curse um, is 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 overcome because I'm going to be out there trying to make birdies, and they're going to be out there trying to score some touchdowns. You're welcome, Kirby Smart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely.